now. Welcome to the week to go to session. This is the second. Oh, did I say go to? I'm sorry. It's a Zoom session. <laughs> we use go to training for years. Welcome to the week two Zoom session. This is the second of four such sessions we're having each Tuesday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Uh, welcome to those who are in attendance. Welcome to those who are watching the recording. Uh, the good news is tonight's lecture is going to be short. Why? Because you can see, okay, so you should be able to see the course layout of activities. So we already completed week one. I'm right now still grading your two bio paragraphs. Um, and then I'll move to the summary that you handed in Sunday night. I have until the end of Thursday to get all grading done. Hopefully I'll get done a little bit sooner than that, but I might need most of that time, okay? Um, because it's essentially like grading the equivalent of 80 assignments because there are about 40 of you. So I have to grade this first, the two bios, and then your summary. So that takes time to get through 80 individualized comments for 80 assignments, okay? Um, but here's the good news. If we look at week two, we can see that it's similarly structured. So you have an overview, you have the, the uh, readings. We have one new activity, so we'll talk about that in just a second. Um, but this guy here, okay, the main assignment that's due on Sunday, it's exactly the same as this assignment, which maybe doesn't make for the most exciting thing, but it's good in this sense, you're, you're gonna be writing another summary, okay? So if you chose the video game article for week one, you'll choose the other video game article for week two. If you wrote about Jay-Z in week one, you'll choose the other Jay-Z article for week two. Um, that's, that's on purpose. You're going to read a pair of articles on the same topic, though from different viewpoints, okay? And then starting next week, the second half of the course, weeks three and four, that will be your opportunity to start speaking out loud. But first, we want to make sure that you understand what you've read. I think I mentioned this in week one, that people are very, very good at giving their knee-jerk reactions <laughs> on comment sections underneath articles and YouTube videos and on discussion boards. Uh, but maybe they're not so great at like reading things first or knowing things fully. So yeah, before we get you to speak about either video games or Jay-Z or Harry Potter or streaming media, we want you to carefully read the two articles first, summarize them, show that you understand the article's contents, and then, because you'll be kind of like a mini expert on those two articles, now you're in a position to respond to them. That will begin in week three. But yes, for the first two weeks, you're summarizing two articles. And of course, you just handed one in on Sunday, and I need to grade and give you feedback so you can use that for the next summary. Um, I'm kind of doing things out of order. I'm speaking so much about this one. Why don't we just talk about this one? <laughs> then we'll get back to the other stuff. Okay, so here's the assignment. So you should be seeing uh, the 2.5 assignment, which is also called, uh, can't see it. Uh, zooming out, okay? 2.5 assignment, zooming out. I have some uh, open things that block my view. You can't see them, but they're, they're there, like the chat window. Uh, um, so here's the list of articles, okay? And they're listed in the same order as in week one. Uh, so don't make the mistake that some students do. It's not many, but it's about one or two students per month. They chose, let's say, the Jay-Z article in week one, and then for some reason, they start grabbing the Disney Plus article in week two. And that leads to problems. Because in weeks three and four, I mean, here's what we're working toward, okay? Sorry to jump around so much. Week one, you summarize one article. Week two, you summarize the second article on the same topic. Week three, you will be in conversation with one of those articles. Week, two, week four, it's kind of final essay, you'll write a piece that folds in information from both articles, right? So you can see what we're doing. One article, second article, speaking to one of the articles, speaking to both of the articles. Um, that's difficult to do if people make the mistake of choosing two completely off topic things. Because how can you write about Jay-Z and Harry Potter in the same essay. <laughs> so please, don't make that mistake, okay? Um, but yeah, you will choose the article that matches the topic that you wrote in week one and do the same thing. Now, I would insist that you wait until you receive my feedback on your week one summary because you'll need that. 
for instance, if you did awesome on the week one summary, you got a good grade, some sort of an A, then you know that you mostly have to do the same thing for week two, right? Just do it again with the article that matches your topic here. If you didn't do so well, well, there's good news as, as, as well, right? Because now you get another shot at it. So you don't have to worry that, oh, well, I didn't do so well on that assignment. I guess I'll just have to move on. No, you get another opportunity to do it all over again with a different article on the same topic, but you get another crack at it, okay? So actually, I'm not going to spend much time on this assignment. Can I be rude <laughs> and tell you to go back to the week one lecture if you have any questions? I mean, certainly, listen, I will answer any questions you have, of course. But what I'm saying is, do I have to review the things I did in week one? There's a list of do's and don'ts for summary writing. I also offered a basic structure to follow. Remember a short introduction where you name the author, the article, the gist, and the gist of what it's about, and then separate paragraphs for each main point from the article. Um, yeah, I think I'll mostly point you at that first lecture because same stuff. Uh, Josh asks, uh, I did the Netflix article. Is the Netflix article here? No, for you it would be the Disney Plus because the larger topic is uh, streaming video. Okay, so it's not specifically on Netflix, but you have a kind of matching article on a competitor of Netflix, uh, and that that should lead you. I haven't had students struggle with that. Okay, like in week four, they can still write their own essay on streaming media that folds in information from both the Netflix article and the Disney Plus article. Everything else, though, should be like 100% matching. So Jay-Z, Video Game Addiction, Harry Potter, uh, streaming audio, right? Um, and all the instructions are the same. So a 300 to 400 word summary, um, all the things I mentioned in week one, like it should be a multi-paragraph summary, not one ginormous paragraph. So let's say you did that. Let's say you get your feedback and it's like, uh-oh, I wrote one ginormous paragraph. Uh, it, it's, it still might be pretty successful as a summary. I don't fail people because it's one ginormous paragraph, but like that would be something to crack for week two. Um, same thing with APA. In week one, I walked through the steps of APA. I opened up a Blake Microsoft Word document and showed how to set up the documents, how to double space it, how to have it in the proper fonts, how to indent the first lines in new paragraphs. And I also showed in real time how to create a reference. Okay. Um, the week one lecture has all that information. Now, if someone here, and you, you don't have to be shy, so Josh or Terry, if any of you would like me to do that again, open up a blank Microsoft Word document and quickly go through the steps, I can do that. Okay, it would only take about five minutes or so, 10 minutes. Um, okay, cool, Josh says yes, please. So we'll get to that in just a second. Um, and remember, every single assignment for this class comes with examples. So here you have an example, right? It also shows how it should look in APA format. So I'm going to show how to do this right now. I'm gonna open up a blank Microsoft Word document that's something else. Uh, sure, save. So, okay, I'm just blank, opening up a blank Microsoft Word document. I have to change my share screen though, because you can't see it probably. There we go. Okay, so here we have a blank document. If, if I, I might go through this a little bit faster than I did in week one. So the first thing we need to do is put it in Times New Roman 12 point fonts. So Times. It's already 12, so good, okay? Because the entire document needs to be in 12 point times New Roman. Second, we are gonna change the spacing from single spaced 1.0 to double spaced 2.0. I'm using Microsoft Word. Um, you can find a free version of Microsoft Word online if you don't have it. You have to go to Microsoft OneDrive. You just type in OneDrive in Google and you'll find it. Um, you can use other tools such as Pages, which is uh, essentially Apple's version of Microsoft Word, but you'll have to find these different functions on your own. It shouldn't be difficult, but they're not gonna be exactly where I'm showing you here. Uh, but if you're using Microsoft Word, you should be able to follow along pretty easily. Okay, so we're in 12 point times New Roman. We've changed it to double spacing. 
And now we just create top of page one information, which includes, let's see here, name, name of course, name of assignments. Okay. Let me go back. So name, that's your name. Okay, so I'm just gonna power it. I'll make it Frank Smith. Okay, so this is a student's name. Uh, name of the class: English composition. And the name of the assignment: two point five. Uh, what's it called zooming out? Zooming out. And then here you would have your centered title. So we're going to center things. And usually students have a title like summary of. Uh, What's the name of one of the articles? You know, I'll just use the same article from week one. So are video games really? I'm a better typist than this. I think I said this in week one as well. It's just that this keyboard is terrible. I hate the new Mac keyboards. They're so shallow and so light that I can't get a grip on the keys. So I make constant mistakes. Uh, Cause I can't feel them. It's like one of those cheapy plug-in keyboards that you could like use on a tablet if you wanted a full keyboard. That's what this laptop keyboard feels like. Oh, it's awful. And I love MacBooks, but I do not like their keyboards now. Okay, so we center the title. We hit enter just once, okay? And then we can begin typing our essay. And we begin on the left. So we use the align left tool, we hit tab. Okay, on the left side of your screen to indent, you hit the tab key and you can start typing. When you reach the end of a sentence, you hit period, hit your space bar twice, once, twice, and keep going. Actually, let me here copy this so I can fill up space. Okay, period, one, two, keep going, period, one, two. And because you have it set up for double spacing, I mentioned this last week as well, it automatically wraps around. Most of you know that, but I see students who don't have it truly double spaced. It's single spaced, and when they get near the edge of the screen, they hit enter twice, almost like they're using a typewriter from the days of old. Um, that can create lots of problems. So please get it set up in double spacing to begin with. I'm gonna fill up a whole bunch of space. Okay. So let's imagine that's a paragraph. That would actually probably be much longer than your actual opening paragraph. But Now, when you reach the end of a paragraph, Hit enter just once, not twice, not three times, just once. Hit tab to indent and keep going. Okay, because even though things may look smashed together, here, let me show the example essay. Um, it's not. Okay, open up a book sometime. Open up a Harry Potter book. You don't see space, extra space between paragraphs. Okay, so this is how things need to look. If it looks smashed together to you, it isn't. Okay, this is what professional looking text looks like. Okay, double spaced in a single font for the entire documents and so on. Okay, let me go back to my Microsoft Word documents. Um, I'm gonna keep filling up more space. So enter, tab to indent, keep going. So let's imagine that your summary is over. Okay, it ends here. So just hit enter, center the word references. It's not in all caps. It's not bolded. It's not italicized. It doesn't have a colon after it. Okay, it's not called works cited. It's not called sources. Just the simple plain word references. And then you need to create your reference. So let's use an example. Uh, let me go back to the desktop. Hold on, I have to select what I'm sharing. Okay, so let's go with one of these articles. The good news is, whoever chooses this article will get to see what it looks like in APA format. So Josh, it sounds like this is your article, so let's do it together. Okay, so we have everything we need. We have a title, Will Disney Plus Be Tough? Why Disney Plus Will Be Tough to Beat? We have an author, David Sims. We have a date, April 16th, 2019. Okay, we're good to go. Let me show how easy this is. So let me go back to my Microsoft Word document, start sharing it. So the cursor is still after the word references. We had enter just once, just once. 
we align left again, and we start creating our reference. So we begin with the author's last name, Sims, comma, first initial, oops, D for David, period. You need periods after each section of information, the author, the date, the article title, et cetera. Now in parentheses, we put the full date. The year comes first, 2019, and I believe it was April 16th. In parentheses, period. Again, periods come after each section. And yeah, we don't abbreviate, so we don't do this. Full month, April 16th. Then the title of the article, but you capitalize as you would a regular sentence. So the W and Y is capitalized because it's like the first word of a sentence. Disney gets capitalized because it's a proper noun. It's the name of a company. Why Disney Plus will be tough to beat. Everything else is lowercase. Okay. Now here's the thing, and I think I mentioned this last week. If this article title appears anywhere else in the text of your essay, up here at the very beginning, you don't capitalize as a regular sentence. You would capitalize all main words like this. Not the T and two, things like two, of, and the, we don't capitalize, okay? So here's how the title looks here. Here's how the title looks here. It's not put in quotation marks. Every main word doesn't receive initial capitalization. No quotes, and we capitalize like a regular sentence. Now, it's up to you. You don't have to put the publication title, but if you do, you, you italicize it, the Atlantic. Period, okay, periods after each section. The only other thing we need is the URL. So I'm gonna grab that, put it in. Now, as you can see, it's done something funky. It's forced it to be single space, that's not right. And I don't like seeing the link. <laughs> so I'm gonna right click on it and say, remove that hyperlink. This happens too sometimes. So I'm gonna have to get rid of the underlining and make it black, okay? Sometimes when you carry things over, for some strange reason, it's, it needs to be fixed. We also need to return this to single space, excuse me, double space, okay? So sometimes you have to repair what you copy over. The final thing we need to do is that you can see with the paragraphs, we indent the first line of a new paragraph, but we don't indent anything else. With references, it's a complete opposite. We do not indent the first line, but we do indent all other lines that come after it. So I'm just going to highlight it and drag the bottom half of my hourglass over half an inch. Oops. Boom. There you go. There's a reference. It is that easy. <clears throat> Terry, if you made some mistakes last week, that's okay. Lots of people do. But my goal is it's that by the end of the month, you should be able to do this. I didn't know. Oops. APA either when I, before I came to Full Sail. I only knew MLA. Now I can do this in my sleep, right? So for example, oh, by the way, if you don't have an author, just use, well, you can, it depends. If there's like um, a group that you can identify as the author, you should put that. So for example, one of the articles, the video game related article is from the news guard. So you could list that as the author, okay? there is no actual person. And the news guard thingy, hold on, bear with me. The news guard one. Yeah, this is it, right? So here, like it lists the news guard as the author, right? The news guard, March 23rd, 2019. So yeah, let me show you how quickly I can do this. Let me share my screen again. So what was it? 2019, March 23rd. Even though that's not right, it doesn't matter, okay? And then the title, addiction, colon, uh, schools, uh, oh no, school officials take action to ease youth video game addiction. Okay, is that the title? Yes, 
I'm taking a peek at the website again. Okay, so a full title. Notice, like a regular sentence. So everything's in lowercase. We do capitalize the S in school after the, uh, after the colon. That's kind of a weird thing because in sentences we don't usually capitalize what comes after a colon, but because it's almost like a secondary title, we do. So yeah, there's some weird uh, exceptions in APA that can confuse people. But basically, yeah, we, ha we, we have an author. In this case, it's the news guard. We have a date, year, full, month, and day, the title. And then again, you don't have to put the publication name, but if you do, again, it would be the news guard, period. And then the uh, only other thing we need is that URL, that web address. And again, it's doing that same weird thing. Don't know why it does that. Okay, double space. My point is, look how fast I can do this, right? I can do this in my sleep now. I can do this all day, <laughs> just create references. Boom. And actually, if we had two references, uh, we'd have to put this in alphabetical order. And even though there's a T there, it's actually the N. That is, actually, I don't know. I'm just gonna leave it here for now. <laughs> but yeah, you should do it alphabetically by author's name. Um, so does this make sense? Do you believe you can do this on your own? Either by watching this video, or, um, like I said, you, you, you always have the example, okay? So you have this example too. And if you scroll down, you'll see that this is incorrect. It is correct, I should say, APA format, okay? Last name, first initial, full date, title of the article, uh, publication name italicized, and then the web address. So you have other places to look. Ooh, the article link doesn't work anymore. Okay, so let me move on because I think I've covered this assignment enough. Uh, I will point you to week one. If you need a refresher on like do's and don'ts, how to write summaries, uh, and you can skip ahead in the week one video. Okay, it's found under the 1.2 activity. So all you need to do is go in there and uh, the video is embedded in the activity. So you can just click on it and you can skip ahead. So you don't have to watch the whole 40 minutes from week one. If you only wanna to skip to the part where I show a suggested uh, structure to follow, just skip to that part. Or if you wanna to skip to the part where I do APA, either in this lecture or in week one, just skip ahead into the video to the part where you can see that I'm opening up like Microsoft Word documents. Okay, let me move on because I kind of lied. <laughs> now we, we still have plenty of time, 15 minutes, but let's talk about the other activity, okay? Uh, so this is the one that is due on Wednesday. So tomorrow. This is called Check Your Flow. So what you're going to do for this one is you're going to take the summary you just handed in, okay? And you are going to do two things to it. First, you're going to color code it. So your own summary that you just handed in Sunday, you are going to color different parts of it. The thesis or main idea or rather your stating of what the article's thesis or main idea is, you're gonna color in blue. Topic sentences, you're gonna color green. Topic sentences are usually the opening sentence of a paragraph, because that sentence kind of defines or sets up what the paragraph is going to be about. Um, but if it's not the opening sentence, see if there are sentences that you can identify that are sort of defining things before you discuss them fuller. Um, these next two categories are a little bit confusing because there's overlap. Like anything that qualifies as evidence from the article, you would color purple. Anything that is explanation, you would color red. And finally, any sort of concluding ideas in your summary, you would color pink. Essentially, there's probably, if your summary is pretty well organized, the beginning stuff in your summary is going to be blue the opening paragraph, or excuse me, opening sentences of your body paragraphs, your middle paragraphs are probably gonna be green. The other stuff in the paragraph is going to be colored either purple or red, and the end of your article is going to be colored pink, okay? Um, it's, it might even be simpler for me just to show the example in this case, because again, every assignment comes with examples, so let's take a look, right? So here's the summary of the Big Bang Theory, and geeked him. So, yeah, this looks pretty good. His argument is that the show, despite its faults, transcends the stereotypes upon which it was built. So yes, this is the 
student capturing what the article's main idea is or overall argument or thesis. So that gets colored blue. The opening sentences of the, each paragraph is, are colored green because yes, those sentences are defining what the student is going to talk about. Murray begins by addressing X. After this, he shifts to Y, okay, the role of women. These are classic topic sentences because you're preparing the reader for what's coming, which is more information about these things. Okay, and then he's, he or she is colored evidence and explanation, purple and red. I don't really make that big a, I'm not gonna be looking at your color coding that deeply to see if, oh, this should have been red. No, 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 that should have been purple. <laughs> it's more good, to, are there identifiable identifiable parts in your summary that are more or less properly colored, okay? Um, yeah, you can see that the concluding remarks are colored pink. Uh, you also have to write at least a 100 word reflection. This is something that about a handful of students forget every month, okay? So it's not just color coding. You also have to have a reflection, uh, which is here, okay? Once you've identified, color coded, write a uh, reflection about the structure of your summary. Were there places where you could have improved? Did the color coding help illuminate any errors you hadn't noticed? Which aspects of your summary were well organized or well done? Okay, so you're basically answering these questions to create a 100 word or more reflection. And the reflection is important here because let's say you didn't do so well on that week one summary. Let's say it's not very well organized or you had trouble color coding it because it wasn't very clear. Um, well, a reflection that indicates that, it, that helps me because I can see that this person is true, truly reflected, that this exercise has helped them see problems. Um, in other words, it kind of mitigates against problems that you might have had in the summary. Um, because if not, then I would wonder like, wow, why is this color coding so random? There might be an explanation, right, that's contained in your reflection. But without the reflection, I don't know that. Um, and even if you did well, you should be able to still talk about and answer these questions. And like I said, you always have an example. So you can see what this person's reflection, how this person color coded things. Um, yeah, don't forget about the examples. Too many students honestly never look at the examples. Uh, some people really learn by example, more than these lectures, more than reading the instructions. Um, so don't forget about those. But really, this is a pretty basic activity. And even though a lot of you probably won't have my feedback yet, that's actually a good thing on your summary, I mean, your week one summary, because you color coding things and reflecting on it without my feedback, yeah, that's a pretty good test. Like, let's see what you can identify or what you think about your own week one summary uh, without me kind of helping you. Because obviously, if I write about how this should be several paragraphs or how this is how this could be uh, better organized, that will help you come up with answers here. So it's actually maybe a good thing that you're doing this without my feedback yet. Though some of you may have feedback before you do this. Most of you probably not, because I'll still need tomorrow to finish grading the bios. Okay. Um, I think that's mostly what I wanted to go over. The only other thing is you have a grammar quiz. This grammar quiz is kind of goofy. I mean, the quiz itself is fine, but essentially if you take it two or three times, you automatically get graded out with a perfect 100. I shouldn't say that because then people might just not even try. My advice would be to try and to take it seriously and try to pay attention to why you got questions wrong and try to improve. Um, but yeah, this thing automatically grades out at 100. Because <laughs> we used to give students up to 10 chances. And yes, in 10 chances, you can absolutely get your grade up really high. Because every time you take the quiz, um, you get explanations for why you got certain questions wrong. And if you can remember those rules, you can absolutely, within 10 attempts, lift your grade up to an A or an A minus. But so many students weren't using up all 10 attempts. Uh, so they'd be getting like 30s and 40s because the first time, the first time you take the quiz, you probably will score pretty low. Um, and I don't know if that was too depressing for students or if students just forgot about it, but they weren't taking advantage. So now we have fewer attempts, two or three, I believe, 
and it just automatically grades at 100. It's like you get the 100 just for trying. <laughs> and again, I don't know if I should be saying that or not. It should maybe, I should leave that as a pleasant surprise. Because most of, I mean, Terry, Josh, awesome. So those of you who are watching the recording of this, awesome. But sadly, there are probably a whole bunch of students who do not watch the lectures. So they'll find out the surprise for themselves. Those of you who are attending, well, okay. Your reward for attending is you've been told in advance that, yeah, this will be an automatic 100 if you just take it the two or three times. Um, you have another one in week three, okay? These are nothing to freak out about. But yeah, we got to fix this activity. Either get rid of it or <laughs> make the quiz easier or I don't know. But it's just, it's kind of dead weight. Hey, but for you, it's an easy 100. Okay. Since there are two of these quizzes, 10% of your grade should be an A. And professionalism should be an A as well, because I don't really take off points unless uh, assignments are significantly late. So yeah, that could be 20% of your grade. <laughs> that's an A. Uh, that's why I said in week one, this class really isn't that difficult. The only people who run into trouble are those who don't complete work or submit work, but it is not in any way matching the instructions. Like not even close. It's almost like they just made up their own assignment. Um, those are the only students who struggle. Everybody else passes, typically with an A or a B if they're watching lectures. Okay, so questions, comments, anything? That's really all I have to go over is to tell you about the color coding activity that comes with a short reflection, uh, tell you about the easy, easy grammar quiz, and then for this assignment, it's the same thing as you just did in week one. And again, I would recommend you waiting until Thursday to get my feedback because again, if you did awesome or mostly awesome on the week one summary, then you just know you need to do it again. If you didn't do so well, well, you got another chance to, get, to have another crack at it because the week two assignment is really the same thing. Okay. Thank you, Terry. I appreciate you being here. Honestly, last month, no one showed up for any of the lectures. And though it was easy for me, because I just put up recordings of past lectures, what am I gonna do, talk to myself for an hour? Um, I much prefer coming into campus, which is empty, because we're supposed to be staying at home, but I come in just for the hour of this lecture. And yeah, it feels good to get out, to move about. So if you don't have any questions, I will wish you a good night. I will see you next Tuesday at the same time. Um, yeah, sir, that's a good way. I think I had like a welcome announcement that kind of said the same thing, which is like during this pandemic, uh, things are starting to open up a little bit again, but um, why not use this school as kind of the stability, something to focus on, something that gives life structure. If, Sadly, some people are out of work or some people are full-time students, but they're sort of stuck at home mostly. So yeah, why not turn to this class, this school, as that sort of uh, stable structure? I know that I am, because it gets, I get a little bit stir crazy, stuck at home. Okay, cool. And Josh, you did fine on the bios. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not going to say you're, you're great out loud on the lecture, but <laughs> you did fine. <laughs> Better than fine. There are students who want your grade. So, but no, it's a good thing to always improve on whatever, whatever you can. Okay, so I've got about two minutes left in the recording. So if there aren't any pressing questions, um, I think I'll shut things down. Is that okay? So I can begin processing the video so that other people can watch it in a little bit. And I'll see you guys next week, okay? Adios, everyone.